presenting the Mirth Parade. Wilson as the drum major. Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are with a hey nani nani and a hot cha cha, and this time we find the old birth parade decorated with cupids, roses, orange blossoms, and tickets to Niagara Falls. For we dedicate this edition of the Mirth Parade to the greatest of all American pastimes, courting. All the world loves a lover except when he sings under your daughter's window at 3 a.m. But it isn't 3 a.m. yet, so let's fall in love with lovers and let's go courting. Sweetheart, I'm in love with you. Let me hear you whisper that you love me too. Keep the love light shining in your eyes so true. Let me call you sweetheart, I'm in love. Uh-oh, Sylvia Picker. Tell me, why aren't you out with your boyfriend, Jeremiah? Oh, haven't you heard, Mr. Wilson? I haven't been going with him for months. Oh, you haven't been going uh-uh. with your boyfriend for months? Uh-uh. Well, how's that? Well, you see, last March, I made the mistake of asking him what he was giving up for Lent, see? Uh-huh, and he shouldn't have been angry at that, I don't believe. Well, what did he give up for Lent? Uh, me. Oh, isn't that too bad? <laughs> I suppose you have lots of boyfriends, though, haven't you, Sylvia? Oh, I should say, Mr. Wilson. But I have one special one that I like the best. Oh, that's a good old race of love. Tell uh-huh. me, Sylvia, how far were you in the race of love when you picked that favorite boyfriend? Oh, I was on my fifth lap. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, my new boyfriend just won $50,000 on the sweepstakes. Oh, $50,000 on the sweepstakes? Uh-huh. Well, aren't you sure you have the right dope, haven't you? What? I say, you certainly have the right dope. Uh-huh. You go ahead and spoil that gag. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I say, are you sure you have the right dope? Well, he'll do until a bigger dope comes along. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Sylvia, now that it's spring and there's so much romance in the air, I think that I'll try courting you. I'd like to make some real old-fashioned love to you. Uh, old-fashioned love? <laughs> well, come on over at the house and I'll introduce you to Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Well, serious, though, uh, seriously, Sylvia, don't you think that you could learn to love me? Uh, I might. I learned to eat spinach. Oh. <laughs> well, if, if you won't have anything to do with me, you, you might as well tell me what your, uh, your boyfriend is. I suppose that uh, he's very, very romantic. Tell me, do you hold his hand when you go to the movies? Yeah, but uh, even that doesn't stop him. <laughs> you know, though, Sylvia... <laughs> the only one that has a sweetheart. No. Andy Andrews is so in love that he's walking on air. Why, he's even raising a mustache because his girl likes them. That mustache of his has sure made me laugh many times. <laughs> yeah, it uh, tickled me, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, Sylvia, what really happened to that boy Jeremiah that you used to go with? I, I really thought that that was a serious match. Oh, no, uh uh-uh. I won't go out with him anymore. Well, why not? Well, you see, Mr. Wilson, our little romance was sort of connected with automobiles. Mm -hmm. Sort of, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like, the first time he held my hand was was in a Chevrolet, Mm -hmm. see? And the first time he kissed me was in a Buick. Well, so what? 
Why should you be mad at him? Well, uh, now he has a Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sylvia Picker still thinks that a courtier is some kind of a curtain. And now, two boys who know all about courting. They've been in every court in Europe and a few night courts in Hoboken. Clark and Cleary, who contend that two can live as cheaply as one and usually do. Clark and Cleary. <laughs> Take care. Take, Take care. care. Beware, beware. beware. Clark, Clark and Cleary are on the air. Well, Leo, tonight being devoted to courting, it's as good time as any to announce my engagement. Your engagement? Why, you're already married, Cliff. You've got a wife. Well, this is the time of year to trade them in and get a new model. <laughs> uh, what's the matter? You having trouble? No, not exactly. She's just getting a little slow on the hills, that's all. <laughs> Why, Cliff, this is terrible. Does the girl to whom you're engaged know you're married? Sure. Well, what about your divorce? Oh, I can't be bothered with a divorce. It's too expensive. <laughs> Why, Cliff, you can't do that. That'll make you a bigamist. Make me a what? A bigamist. A bigamist. Well, that's all right. I've been a pessimist. Now I'm an optimist. I came darn near being a nudist, so what's a little ist, more or less? <laughs> I might as well be a bigamist. Say, listen. They can give you ten years for that. Well, any guy that'll get married more than once ought to get ten years. <laughs> well, uh, who's the girl you're going to marry? I don't know. I met her at a fire a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> hey... Now, that isn't the girl I saw you with last night, is it? Yep, that's the one. Why, she's lame, isn't she? No, she got that way from living on the side of a hill. <laughs> Say, well, I think you're impossible if you should ask me. And I think you're nuts and you don't have to ask me. <laughs> Say, how in the world did you ever get mixed up in an affair of this kind? Well, we both ran to this fire and we were standing there laughing the way the walls were falling down and people burning up and everything and... I turned to her and I said, hello. Say, what'd she say? Well, she didn't answer, so when I saw I had her, I just sidled up to her. And, and what? I said to her, honey, you are just the kind of a girl my father always told me about. And what did she say? She said, oh, yeah, <laughs> but you're just the kind of a man my mother often spoke to me about. <laughs> <laughs> say, how'd you make out with that little Australian girl you were going with? Perfect. Turned out okay, eh? Did you propose to her? I'll say. It was a beautiful moonlight night in a wisteria garden. What kind of a garden? Wisteria. <laughs> Sounds like a great name for mouthwash. Yeah. <laughs> we were sitting on a rustic bench gazing into each other's eyes, and then came that wonderful moment, that moment when I was to ask her that all-important question. Oh, there's a lot of guys who'd like to live that moment over again. How come? Uh, they'd ask a different question. Right. <laughs> well, I drew her close to me, looked into her eyes, and I said, Darling, will you marry me? Yes, and she said... No. So we both lived happily ever after. <laughs> I sure was glad I didn't marry that dame. Well, why? She had too many affairs. A lady with a past, yeah, eh? Yeah, she used to run around with a doctor. He called her tonsils. Tonsils? Why did he call her tonsils? Because she wanted to be taken out all the time. <laughs> was that her only affair? Well, she took up with a railroad engineer, but she aired him. For what? He insulted her. Insulted her? How? He said he'd been railroading for 20 years, and she was the only wreck he ever had. <laughs> What did she do then? She took up with a fireman, but that didn't last. Well, what was the trouble there? He got too hot for her. Boy, <laughs> she had plenty of romances, didn't I'll she? I'll say. Then she started going with a baggage man, but that didn't take so well either. Well, what was the matter with him? Oh, he kept running around in his trunks all the time. <laughs> And she took up with a mounted policeman. Well, what happened to him? Oh, every time she asked him up to the house, he'd bring his horse. His horse? Yeah. You know, a living room is no place for a horse, especially in fly season. <laughs> I get it. I get it. He was a fly cop, eh? Yeah, but she put the flip to him. Uh, do you know what she finally did? No, what did she, she finally do? A, she married a guy that only weighed 90 pounds. Well, you shouldn't judge a man by his weight. I know, Leo, but 90 pounds. Why, my sister has a goiter that weighs more than that. <laughs> gentlemen was Cliff Clark and Leo Cleary, radio's two bad boys who still think that a noiseless typewriter is a deaf and dumb stenographer. But here's a charming little Eddie Adams, and speaking of courting, here's the little girl you'd all be courting if you could see her, Eddie Adams. I know when music's pretty, I'm not so quickly sold, so the spoon in when I tune in always leaves me cold. But when you sing a ditty, it has a different lilt. You keep sighing, hidey, hiding, till I will. Sing to me, let it go. You've got rhythm that makes me play. So sing, sing, sing. You serenade me so sweetly. That's how you've made me be yours completely. Sing. 
thing to me, sweet or hot. When you do it, it's always got that certain thing. Each time you prune a popular tune, you put such feeling into it. I want a swoon. Oh, one, two, three, let's begin. Give off music and I'll give in. So sing, sing, sing. Fine, Eddie Adams, fine, and thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we introduce Tizzy Lease, the old microbe of the cookbook. Tizzy says she was courted once, but that was so long ago her love letters have all turned into alimony years ago. Come on, Tizzy, and give us your recipe for a happy courtship. Hello, folks, and listeners. Now, find me, I'd like to say hello to all of my gentlemen, gentlemen admirers and courters. And speaking of courters, reminds me of my Prince Charming I used to have. My, he would call for me on his bicycle, and I'd sit up on the handlebars, and away we'd go as fleet as an arrow. Well, you see, we were bows. I guess that accounts for it. And speaking of bows, I gave a little party the other evening for several of my gentlemen friends. My, what fun we had. My gown was cut a teensy bit low, so one boy said, what kind of a gown is that? So I said, well, I'm sort of a debutante. I call it my coming out gown. So he said, well, from the back, I'd say you were practically out of it right now. (laughs) So then we danced. My, I had so many compliments. The boys said I was so light on their feet. So I did a sort of a solo dance. So to show their appreciation, I guess, they presented me with a cup. My, I still have the bump. <laughs> but one gentleman said, I simply can't dance with you, Miss Lish. Your perfume intoxicates me. I guess it did because a little later he fell off the back porch. <laughs> and one gentleman asked me what kind of perfume it was. So I said, why, that's deer kiss. So he said, if that's deer kiss, the deer must have had halitosis. <laughs> Wasn't that ducky? (laughs) So then I served one of my special delicious Lish dishes called Smelty. Doesn't that sound good? (laughs) I've had so many requests for it, I thought I'd tell you just how it is made. Are you ready? First put counter in the sink and pause for a moment and put it on the table. Now take three and one-half cans of sardines that have been open for about two weeks. (laughs) Remove the bones and put colander back in the sink. Add one sliced barracuda, one sliced swordfish, one slice yellowtail, one slice mackerel, then add one slice of any good fish. <laughs> Stir this together and set it outdoors. I guess I don't have to tell you that. And after, <clears throat> after guests are seated, garnish the plates with orchids, and just as they go to eat it, drop one slice of halibut on top. And when your guests say, do we have to eat this, just say, yes, that's the halibut. <laughs> And now, and now I must get going as I have to give a cooking lesson to some old maids on how to make a date loaf. <laughs> so I'll leave you as the lawyers always say at party. Sue you later. Sue you later. <laughs> Tizzy Lish is the original reason why so many men get married to other women. But now we must say goodbye for this time. This is Don Wilson promising you that the Mirth Parade will be back with you again soon. Thank you.